cool. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're gonna make an online store, portfolio, blog, or website, do it right and visit squarespace.com slash make anything for 10% off your first purchase. Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Devin here with Make Anything and I wanna wish you all a happy October. It's that one month where we're all looking forward to the very last day because of course that's Halloween when we get to dress up, be crazy, party, and it's totally socially acceptable. It's always a fun time of year and it becomes infinitely more fun when you have a 3D printer and you have some design skills because then you can really become anything you want to be. You'll see in a couple of weeks when I show you my costume that I really took that to the extreme. But today I'm actually going to show you how I helped out my sister with her costume. This year Melanie decided she's going to dress up as Medusa, the dreadful creature from Greek mythology known for her head of venomous snakes and her gaze that turns viewers to stone. Now, I'll admit the turning people to stone part is a little bit tricky, so I think we'll focus on the snakes. And we're gonna start by sculpting in VR, so let's jump right into it. All right, here we are in Gravity Sketch, my favorite VR sculpting app, and I'm using my HTC Vive. And Gravity Sketch has been updated a bit since the last time I used it, and one of the really cool features is that you can bring in reference objects like this head. So basically, this head is going to be a stand-in for my sister's head, and I'm gonna sculpt my snakes wrapped all around it, and then I can uh, do a little bit more work and print it out. So I'll start out by choosing a nice green color so I can have a good idea of what the end result might look like. And then I'm basically just gonna start tracing around the head and putting my snakes on there. What you're seeing here is the control point mode, which is super useful for having more control over my 3D stroke. So I can change the width of specific points along this stroke, and I can also move each point to have a lot of control over what this curve is doing. So that's gonna be really helpful for getting these snakes to wrap nicely around the head form. And what I'm trying to do here is create a good mass of snakes that I can later convert into a single solid form, and then I'll subtract the shape of the head from that form to leave me with the hollow, perfectly head-shaped part. So it's actually ideal if these snakes are ever so slightly overlapping the head because then when I subtract that head shape, it's gonna make it more curved and dome shaped and hopefully result in a more comfortable headdress. So I'm basically gonna add one snake at a time. Each 3D stroke that I draw is gonna represent one snake. And this is a somewhat abstract headdress, I guess, because I'm not gonna try to go in and make a super detailed snake. My sister's gonna end up painting on it and kind of adding the snake details that way. But for now, I just want nice smooth curves that are kind of wiggling their way around the head. I'll also play around with the control points and try to make the snakes look like they're solid objects because when I'm drawing here in VR, everything can kind of pass through everything else. But by curving the snakes around the other snakes, it kind of looks like they're actually piled on top of each other. Here we are a little further along, and you can see I'm trying to create a good composition. So I want the snakes kind of coming from the back of her head and mostly facing forward because, you know, that's what Medusa's snakes are going to be doing when they're hissing at the person she's looking at. And I'm just having them wrap around and trying to get good coverage all across the head. That way it'll stay on her head and it'll also just look good and like a full head of snakes. All right, so you got a good idea of what I'm doing here. Let's skip right to the end, and you can see what my final form looks like. So here it is, and another great thing that's been added to Gravity Sketch is layers. So I have the head on one layer, and I have the snakes on another layer. And for now, I'll just delete the head shape and export the rest as an OBJ file. And I'm gonna bring that into Mesh Mixer to do the rest of my work. But before we do that, I need to measure my sister's head, because right now this model has no sense of scale, and we need to get it that correct size. So this isn't a fancy measurement device, I'm just using my flexible tripod since I didn't have calipers that were the right size. And with that, I can get a pretty good measurement of the width and depth of my sister's head. I'll use these measurements in just a bit, but first we're gonna open up both of our objects in Mesh Mixer, the snakes and the head as two separate objects, and then I'll line them up manually using the transform command. Now I can use the measurement tool to see what the depth of this model is using this Z direction option. And I can see here that it's about 42.83551 millimeters. So to make this the right size, we need to do a little bit of math. 
So we'll write down that current depth. And then I want that to equal the true measurement of my sister's head, which was about 209.55 millimeters. Now I can't use that specific measurement to scale this up. So what I'm gonna do is select everything and then go into the transform tools and use one of these measurements here. So I'll use the Z measurement, which is 64.12 millimeters. And then we'll plug that into this equation. So that goes there and X here is what we're trying to solve. So let's just do a little bit of algebra math magic. Wabbity bop de boop and there we go. 313.67 millimeters is what we need to change that Z scale to. So I'll just go ahead and plug that into Mesh Mixer and that should bring us to the correct scale. The next thing I have to do is convert my sculpture into a solid model. That way it can be 3D printed. So I'll use this Mesh Mixer make solid command and I'll make sure to have the accuracy pretty high up because I want things to stay smooth and clean looking. And then I'll make the head solid as well using similar settings. Now I can select those two solid models and use this Boolean difference command, which will subtract the head from the snakes. So now if we look on the inside of this headdress, you can see that it is in fact smoothed out to match the contour of that head model. Awesome, so now we'll just quickly use the inspector here to repair the model, clean up that little hole that's over there on the right, and then we can export this as an STL and bring it into our slicer to 3D print. Here we are in Simplify 3D, where I can go ahead and center and arrange the model to fit on the build plate of my CR10. And honestly, I wasn't even considering the size of this thing when I was sculpting it. So it is a total stroke of luck that this thing just barely fits onto the build plate. It's kind of extraordinary. <laughs> I'm also gonna mess around with the orientation of this thing just a bit to try to minimize the amount of support material that I'm gonna have to use. Typically when I'm designing things for 3D printing, I try to avoid using support material altogether, but with a crazy complex model like this, it was pretty unavoidable. Here you can see when I first sliced this thing, I got a build time estimate of nearly 300 hours, so clearly I'm gonna have to try to minimize that. But first I'm gonna open up this support generation option, which lets me actually create custom supports. What you can see here are the supports that would be automatically generated. And you'll notice that at the tips of some of the snakes, there are these very small thin columns, which would have a really hard time printing. So I'm actually gonna have to add more support here in order to connect these pillars into those larger chunks of support material, which will help hold everything together. Now that I've done that, I'll go ahead and open up my process settings and mess around with that and try to refine my print. First of all, I have a support infill percentage of 50%, which is pretty high, so I can bring that down to 25. And to make up for that, I can just create these dense support layers at the very top of the support material so that there's still enough material holding up the parts. I'm also gonna go ahead and just bring down the overall infill percentage. And I'll also bring down the number of shells to three, which is still kind of high, but with a model like this that might get tossed around a bit, I want it to be pretty sturdy. And I can increase the layer height to two, which will just help lower the time that the printing takes. So let's go ahead and preview this print again with my new changes. And as you can see, it's now down to about 100 hours. Still a huge print, but much less than it was before. Here you can see it printing out, and while it looks like it just got started, this is actually after my CR10's already been running overnight. So when some of the support materials started peeling away, I decided to try to remedy the situation, and I did that using my 3D pen. So I just paused my print and started adding these struts to the support material to try to hold things down. And as you can see, it got pretty crazy, but somehow, surprisingly, it worked. It's especially amazing in this little section where part of the support material is entirely supported by this net of 3D pen that I made. So that was definitely nerve wracking, but after that beginning part of the print was dealt with, the rest of the print went pretty well. Although unfortunately, I went through my whole spool of this Builder's Blade PLA from Melt Ink, which is a really nice color, but I had to swap it out part way through, which just means we're gonna have to paint the whole model afterwards. Nevertheless, despite these setbacks, after an astonishing 125 hours, this print did complete. And that's a new record for me. As you can see, it's a massive print, and it weighs about two and a half pounds, which is pretty darn heavy for a 3D print. If you look at the bottom here, you can see my web of 3D pen holding everything together. 
I'm honestly still shocked that everything came out as well as it did. Anyways, now it's time for the fun part, removing the support material. And you might think I'm being sarcastic if you've dealt with a model that has a lot of support material, but I was actually pleasantly surprised by how clean and easily everything broke off. Yeah, that was super satisfying and I just had to scrape off a few extra bits, but overall it was really clean and ready to try on. So here I am testing it out, and as you can see, it fits really well. It's a little bit loose, but that's actually intentional because that's better than it being too small. And my sister has a lot of hair, so she can use that to hold it into place. With the 3D printing stuff done, it was time to hand things over to my sister for the post-processing. So here you can see her adding detail to the bellies of the snakes using this brilliant gold paint pen. And that was after she did some light sanding and used primer and this metallic green auto paint to cover the whole snake. She also glued on some shimmering red Swarovski crystals for the eyes, and I think those were a really nice touch. Here she is trying on the finished headdress, and I honestly think it's one of the coolest things that I've sculpted in VR. Unfortunately, Melanie had to head back home to Sweden before she could complete the entire costume, but she was nice enough to put on all the makeup and send me these photos. I think you'll agree, it's a pretty fantastic costume, and I'm sure Melanie's gonna have to answer a lot of questions about where she got this crazy headdress. All right guys, that's about it for this episode. I hope you liked it. It was a super exciting project for me and definitely one of my most nerve wracking prints to date, but I'm really happy that it turned out as well as it did. Before we end this, I wanna give a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring my video, not only for the support, but because I'm genuinely a big fan of their service. Squarespace makes it dead simple to create a really clean, professional looking website super quickly, and I've already been using them for several years. Back in college, when I had to build a web portfolio, it was so helpful because I was already super busy and Squarespace has all these professional templates. Honestly, any one of them looks great. And you just choose a template, throw in your own content, and just like that, you've got a great website. This actually leads to another announcement, which I'm super excited for, and that is the launch of my official Make Anything website. So thanks to Squarespace, in just a few days, I've started building this website. You can already visit right now at makeanything.design, one of those fancy new domains. And because it's so easy, I've already put up a few projects where you can see the videos nicely organized, some extra photographs and extra material. It's super cool. I'm also putting together a little bit of a blog where you can see some more tidbits and behind the scenes stuff. And I'm also gonna start working on a community network where we can all collaborate on all kinds of awesome creative projects. So check it out, makeanything.design, and don't forget to visit squarespace.com slash makeanything if you wanna get 10% off a website of your own. All right, that's it for today. Until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. And visit makeanything.design.